Rumors that Apple is trying to apply all that display to their iPad Air didn't come true in the end. The reason is predicted to be because the difference between the OLED method that Apple wants and the OLED method that Samsung wants or the price difference could not be narrowed. The brightness of the high-end model of iPad has been improved a lot compared to the past by adopting Mini-LED, and in the case of iPad Pro, the peak brightness reaches 1,600 nits when using HDR. In addition, unlike cell phones, iPad often has to work for a relatively long time at high brightness and has many fixed icons, so durability related to burning must be considered important by Apple. For that reason, rumors say that Apple wanted to get a double-layer OLED supply from Samsung, but Samsung refused. So what is double-layer OLED? How it can be operated at high brightness while minimizing burning? and why Samsung had no choice but to reject Apple's request. Now let's start the tech trick. First, let's take a look at how the departure process of a small and medium-sized OLED used in mobile phones proceeds. Here is a glass substrate on which the TFTs that drive the display are formed. The glass substrate is put into the vacuum evaporator in high vacuum state using a robot. Vacuum depression equipment is an equipment that coats ultra-thin organic materials by sublimating them in high temperature, high vacuum conditions. It is composed of several independent chambers. Each chamber is equipped with a fine metal mask to deposit organic materials only at the desired location for RGB on the glass substrate. When the glass substrate is inserted, the shadow mask is precisely controlled and attached under the glass substrate through machine vision. Now let's see how process goes on in order. The fine metal mask mentioned earlier is precisely attached to the lower part of the glass substrate put into the first chamber, and organic materials that sublimate from the lower part of the chamber pass through the fine metal mask and are attached to the glass. When the deposition in the chamber is finished, the glass substrate leaves the chamber and moves to the next chamber to deposit another material and goes through a similar process. If this process is repeated seven times, a total of seven ultra-thin organic material layers are formed on the glass substrate, and the organic material deposition process is completed. Then an electrode that injects electrons is formed, and the OLED panel is made through a packaging process to block the OLED panel from the external air and moisture. When this panel is connected with the driving chips, an OLED for viewing videos is completed. The AA OLED that Apple wants to put on its iPad Air would have to go through this departure process twice. In other words, since the OLED departure process that was produced previously is repeated twice, the display manufactured through this process is called a AA OLED. The problem is that in order to go through the double departure process, the number of lengths of the chamber of the equipment must be doubled or more, which increases the investment cost, reduces the production yield, and increases the material consumption cost. Then why is Apple insisting on a double-layer OLED that has to use such a long process? The reason is simple. It is the intention to secure the durability of the display while realizing high brightness. Let's take an example. Here is one single layer OLED display, and let's assume that when driving with a brightness of 500 nits, it is 10,000 hours of time when burning appears. However, to increase the brightness to 1,000 nits to secure visibility outdoors, the amount of current applied to the display must be doubled. Here is the problem. The lifespan of the OLED decreases as the amount of quarant injected increases. In general, if the amount of quarant is doubled, the lifespan is reduced by one-third. 
Therefore, doubling the brightness would have the horrific result of reducing the lifespan of the display by one-third. However, as described above, AA OLED has a display form in which two OLEDs are stacked on one glass substrate. This is because one OLED emits a brightness of 500 nits, so if you overlap two OLEDs, from the viewer's point of view, the brightness is doubled, that of 1000 nits. Therefore, from the viewer's point of view, the display is driven at 1000 nits, which is twice the brightness of single-layer OLED but each display is driven at the same 500 nits as before, burn-in will appear after 10,000 hours. That's a huge difference, isn't it? If we want just 500 nit brightness using double-layer OLED, each single-layer OLED only needs to use 250 nit brightness, which is half the single-layer OLED, so only half of the quarant is injected into each layer. Therefore, it increased lifetime three times. As a result, the thickness of the device is increased by only about 150 nanometer, because ultra-thin organic layer deposition is repeated twice, but the difference in durability increases more than three times. If Apple had promised to pay twice the price of the existing display, the negotiations would not have broken down. That's it for today. Goodbye.